Hey everyone, today our lesson is going to be on I can write inequalities. Inequalities has that word equal in it, um, but it's not a, an equation. It is similar because they're comparing two quantities, but it's not an equation. An inequality has something that is less than or greater than, or sometimes it's less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. So our symbols, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. So that should be a review for you. So the amount of money I have in my pocket is less than five, but greater than four. Well, that's easy. There are many, many, many possibilities. Take a pause and choose one value that my amount in my pocket could be, which again, we know this is a lie because I have no money in at all, much less in my pocket. But let's pretend I really do. So I chose $4.50 because it's right smack dab in the middle and I thought that's what some of you might do. If you chose a different one, don't worry, it's okay. Um, just use your number. So now we're going to write an inequality stating the comparison to 4. Um, before I continue, I again want to say I hope you're actually taking notes. My expectation is you are taking notes and not and pausing when I say pause. Be an active learner. All right. So an inequality statement. If we're going to use these symbols, four. And I always like to go in numerical order. How does four compare to four dollars and fifty cents? It is less than. So again, this hopefully is a complete review for you. So now, write an inequality, comparing it to $5. So $4.50, again, I like going in numerical order, is less than 5. That's a lot of what we're going to be doing today with irrational numbers. And then eventually, we will um, talk about opposites and how they the opposites compare in inequalities. All right, so it says graph your answer from the opening exercise. My answer was 4.5 or $4.50, so I have to graph that. And so how am I going to number my number line? Well, if I have zero on there and it is right in the middle, I would have to to be able to, and I'm gonna to be able to get up to the four dollars and fifty cents. I would have to number by ones. Um, if you had zero or you did not have the zero, you could have actually numbered by tenths. So I'm gonna just stick with this: one, two, three, four, five, and the negatives. But again, two, negative three, negative four, negative five. You could have numbered by tenths and then have this in this spot instead. So whatever you chose to do is fine. We could have numbered by tenths or here. Either way, we can do this problem. So I plotted my point because it is between 4 and 5. It's going to be right smack dab in the middle. So it is right there. So this is my answer to A. And then it says, graph, four, and sorry, I know this isn't on yours because somehow the 4 and the 5 didn't show up, but graph 4 and 5. So here's the 4 and here's the 5. So how does this relate? So explain in words how the location supports the inequality statement. Well, I wrote in my inequality statement, 4 is less than 4.5 and 4.5 is less than 5. So if I am explaining in words, and I'm not going to write it, but listen carefully and you can, you can do something similar, I would say this supports my statement because 4 is further to the left than 4.5, and we know the further to the left, the least it is. So 4 is further to the left than 4.5, and 4.5 
is further to the left than 5. So 4.5 is less than 5. So remember, anything that is further to the left is less than. So please stop and actually write. Explain in words so it's embedded in your head. So 4 is further to the left than 4.5, which makes it less than 4.5. And 4.5 is further to the left on the number line than 5, which makes 4.5 less than 5. So take a moment, write that down. So a unit I know that you will be having sometime in your life, probably, I don't know, 8th um, or, or ninth grade, is compound inequalities. And compound inequalities is where you write one inequality statement describing this. And so I use the word smush. And I know that it is not very mathematical, but that's the word I use. It's like you're smushing these together. We know that 4 is less than 4.5 and 4.5 is less than 5. So we can smush the 4.5s together, take the and out, and make one inequality. So 4 is less than 4.5, and 4.5 is less than 5. And we just wrote a compound inequality. It's just like a compound word, where you smush two words together. Now we're smushing two inequalities together. So we just looked what they had in common and we smushed them together. Um, case in point, you will never, ever, ever, never write something that has the signs going in the opposite way. The signs always have to go in the same way. So you might have something like this, like 5 is less than 4.5 is less than 4. I mean, sorry, 5 is greater than 4.5, which is greater than 4. But we should get in the habit of writing it in numerical order. It will help you tremendously in the future. All right, so we're going to write one inequality. So again, a compound inequality where they're smushed together to show the relationship between the sizes 8 and a half, sorry, 10 and a half, 8 and 9. So I'm going to think, which is closer to 0? Because these are all positive, if the one that is closest to 0 is further to the left. So it is going to the, be the least one. So from least to greatest, 8 is less than 9. And again, this is an easy one. You know that 8 is less than 9 is less than 10 and a half. But we're practicing with easy numbers first to see how it relates to the negatives. Okay, so I put one inequality or compound inequality describing. Notice that these symbols are going the same way. We could have also written 10 and a half is greater than 9, is it greater than 8, but we want to get in the habit of going in numerical order from least to greatest. So from least to greatest it would be this one, not this one. Okay, so for the next question it says we're going to be filling in answers down here, talking about the furthest to the right, the change in total rainfall. So first it says write one inequality to order them. So I have these three numbers. I am hoping by now that you know that a negative number compared to two positives is always going to be the least. It is further to the left, so it is going to be the least. So negative 1.5 is less than. Now to compare these, 0.3 compared to 0.5. If they're both positive, we're going to look at the numbers. 3 is, so because they're both tenths, 3 tenths is less than 5 tenths. So I know that this part is review as well. So we're going to say negative 1.4 is less than 0 0.3 is less than 0 0.5. Okay, so that was from least to greatest. From greatest to least, we're going to reverse it. So 0 0.5 is greater than 0 0.3 is greater than negative 1.4. I love this question. 
because now we've ordered them, but it depends on what we're looking for if, if the order gives us our answer. It says, in this case, does the greatest number indicate the greatest change? Well, here's the greatest number, but this change, 0.5, think about it. It only changed, in July, it only changed a half of an inch. But here, it changed almost one and a half inches, so almost three times more. So even though this is the least number, it does not indicate the greater change. So this explain part, remember, is really important. We're having you communicate mathematically. So what I just said is similar to what you should write, and I'm not going to write it here because of sake of time, but what I said again was for July, even though that's the greatest number, it changed a half of an inch. The change was a half of an inch for July. And that is the greatest number. But for May, it almost changed three times more than half of an inch. So it would be 1.5 if it was three times more. But in this case, it's the lowest number, but it's still a change. So it changed negatively, but it's still the greatest change. Make sure you write that down. It's really important. Okay, so Sierra, one of her textbooks costs 55, the other costs 75. Her mom wrote two checks. What two integers represent that change? So remember, since she's writing the checks, it's going out, negative 55 and negative 75. So I see the 75 and I think, oh, that's greater than... 55, and it is, but if we're on a number line, and I'm going to make just a very, very quick one here, we would get to, if this is negative 50 and this is negative 100, we would get to negative 55 before negative 75. So negative 75 is further to the left. So negative 75 is less than negative 55. So the bigger just number is further to the left with negatives. That's a really important thing for you to remember. Jared ordered the numbers negative 70, negative 18, and negative 18.5 like this. Is it true? Explain. Please pause and see if you can do this on your own. Okay, so this is how I explained it. And your words don't have to be exactly mine. Matter of fact, I'd rather they not be exactly mine. I'd rather you put them in your own words. But here, if I'm thinking of my number line, negative 70 is the one that is furthest to the left. So it'd be like right there, where negative 18.5 would be a little bit past negative 18. So he had this completely reversed. So I said it is not true because negative 70 would be further to the left away from zero and 18 would be the closest. He needs to reverse it. So negative 70 is less than negative 18.5, which is less than 18. All right, so that's inequalities. So can you please open your assignment, start it, and let me know if you have questions. We out.